In this lesson, we will be looking at forms of correspondence, namely letters, emails, and text messages. The first thing that we need to look at is the concept of formality. Have a look at this sentence. Do you think it would be better off in a text message, an email, or a letter? That's right. This sentence is suitable for a text message, but not an email or a letter, and certainly not a business letter. It seems that people rarely send letters anymore. It's easier to send an email. But some people still send letters, lawyers, banks, and insurance companies. We expect letters to be the most formal of the three types of correspondence we are looking at. Email has revolutionized the way we communicate. It has also given rise to bad habits. People sometimes think that they can get away with sloppy language in an email. While an email is less formal than a letter, a business email should always maintain correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Around the world, text messages are sent by the billions every day. Many of these are sent to friends, but text messages are used increasingly in business. Due to constraints on the number of characters and the relative difficulty of entering the text, it is acceptable to use short forms and abbreviations for text messages. However, your message should always be clear. Look at these examples. Traditionally, we begin a letter with dear, as in dear Mr. Lim. We start an email in the same way. If you do not know the person's name, you can say dear sir or dear sir or madam. To end a letter, if you know the person's name, you use yours sincerely. However, if you do not know the person's name, you use yours faithfully. To end an email, most people use regards, best regards, and warm regards. Also sound nice. How should we go about writing an email or a simple letter? The best way is to imagine that the correspondent has three parts, or three paragraphs. In the first paragraph, we give our reason for writing. This is a letter or email asking for information. If we are writing in reply to something, we should acknowledge the previous communication. We can do this with a simple thank you for. In the second paragraph, we flesh out the details. Sometimes we use bullet points to make the email easier to read. In the final paragraph, we add a polite closing. Sometimes we request a particular action, as is the case here. To recap, you can structure most basic correspondence by using three simple paragraphs. The introduction, the details, and closing. Here is the correspondence in full. A common mistake made in ending a letter or email is I look forward to see you soon. Usually the word to is followed by the base verb. However, the phrase look forward to is an exception. So the correct phrase is I look forward to seeing you soon. That's the end of today's lesson. Goodbye.